This video deals with the process for finding all the killing vectors on both the Minkowski space-time manifold and the Schwarzschild manifold. It then turns to the condition all killing vectors satisfied, satisfies and shows how that relates to conservation of momentum and energy. So the Minkowski space-time manifold possesses 10 separate killing vectors, each indicating an isometry or symmetry direction. To find these isometries we use the killing equation. Now since Minkowski space-time is flat, the Christoffel symbols vanish and the killing equation simply becomes this object here involving partial derivatives only. Differentiating this expression a second time, ddk here, all the way across, gives us this object. And if we next now permute the indices cyclically, then we will have three terms, the original plus these two new ones the indices are being permuted cyclically. Now what we do is we add the first two of these together and subtract the last one. So here we are. When we work through that, that gives us this object here. Now anti-differentiating twice gives a general form. So anti-differentiate once, and we get this rank 2 object here, this matrix. Differentiate once more and we'll get this vector. There it is. Now if we substitute this solution back into the killing equation, so this general solution here, if we substitute it back into here, the constant vector mj here will disappear, and this vector here, xi, will disappear, and we're left with this matrix. And it turns out that this matrix here is anti-symmetric. It's anti-symmetric in these two indices. So our most general solution is killing vectors of this form here, so our killing vector of the u, or the components of it will be u subscript j will be all of this object here. Now, let's set the uh, anti-symmetric matrix part to zero, and then we'll find solutions that involve just the constant vector part mj. So make this set this to zero, and we'll just find solutions for this. Now, the constant vector part mj can, in the four dimensions of Minkowski space-time, be split into the four basis vectors, each of which are constant because it's flat space. So, for example, this my first one here. All right, these four basis vectors satisfy the killing, killing equation and can be written as mj equals the Kronecker delta ji or just mj equals these basis vectors here. Unit basis vectors, constant everywhere, flat space. All right, so next bit, we set mj to zero and find the solutions of the form this part here, mj is set to zero, and we have this anti-symmetric matrix part times this vector here, which when we expand out or sum out the i's, just give us a vector. Now starting with n21 equals minus n12 gives us equals 1, and all the other entries set to 0 gives us this matrix here. All right, and we're looking for a vector of the form u equals u superscript j, so components there, and these basis vectors here. This is a way of writing basis vectors, as we've seen in the previous video on directional derivatives. All right, so here we go. Just no particular reason for labelling it subscript 1, 2 there, just to show you the indices that are involved. We picked um, i as 1, j as 2, as you saw on the previous page. So this object here, when we expand it out, um, eta subscript, uh, superscript jk and uh, times the anti-symmetric matrix. This is the um, Minkowski metric, uh, multiplied by our matrix, anti-symmetric matrix, and these coordinates here in Minkowski space times the basis vectors. We'll mix, multiply out those three objects there. We get this row vector here times this, these basis column vectors in column form. And that gives us this object here. So here's our vector. Remember d subscript x is a basis vector pointing in the x direction. d subscript y is a basis vector pointing in the y direction. And it turns out this vector is a generator of rotations about the z-axis. Now for a rotation about the x-axis, the generator is, this is the simplest one we can find, and this one here, giving us this vector here, using the same method of working as before. And for a rotation about the y-axis, the generator is this object here, using these uh, elements of the matrix here, gives us this vector. All right, now to show that u subscript 1, 2 is a generator of rotations about the z-axis, let's have a look at its effect upon the coordinates x and y. So take the generator, multiply it by the coordinate x, and if we expand it out, 
d dy of x is 0, so that drops out. d dx of x is 1 times minus y gives us minus y. And then if we take the same generator again and multiply it by the y coordinate, we get the x coordinate, which shows you that this is a generator of rotations about the z axis. Right, if we now restrict one of the coordinates to time, then three more generators of rotation can, uh, rotations can be found. So let's start with n10, 0, zero being the time component, is minus n01 equal 1, gives us this matrix here. Now perform the same operations as before, and we get this generator of rotations here. Now, I'm just remembering this uh, DDT is the subject here. Okay. Now, this result is the Lorentz boost in the x-direction because the x-axis is rotated towards the time axis and the time axis is rotated towards the x-axis, which is a gen which is a the definition of the Lorentz boost. This is shown below in the way it affects the t and x and t coordinates. So let's take the time coordinate, multiply it by the generator, the ddx of ct is 0, um, dds, uh, sorry, ddx of ct is 0, yes, and ddct of uh, ct, so the derivative with respect to time of the time component is 1 times x gives us x. So multiplying by the time coordinate gives us the x coordinate. Takes this generator or boost in the x direction and multiply by the x coordinate gives us the time coordinate, which is exactly what the Lorentz uh, transformation should do. For a boost in the y direction, we use these indices, here, these elements here of the matrix. And gives us this, this vector here, which is generator rotations, a boost in the y direction. For a boost in the z direction, same thing again, and we get this object here. So the 10 killing vectors of Minkowski space time are the four basis vectors here, MJ, and these six rotations. Three rotations here in the space, and three boosts in the x, y, and z directions, giving us 10 killing vectors. All right, now, as a first step to finding the killing vectors of a given metric, look to see which coordinates the metric is independent of. So here's the Schwartz style met metric. There we go. Right there. Now, this metric is independent of the coordinates, time coordinates, and the phi angular coordinate. You can see by these terms here, no time, or, or phi, no, none here. R squared here, R squared sine squared theta, but no phi or time involved. So we can say we have two killing vectors, one in the time direction, one in the phi direction. All right. Now the schwartz style metric exhibits the same rotational symmetry as the two-sphere, S2. So our rotation about the z-axis can be represented by this vector here, as we saw earlier. And we can transform it to polar coordinates, so x, y, z are you know, spherical polar coordinates. Now the transformation matrix relating the unit spherical basis vectors to the Cartesian unit vectors is this object here. And that relates the spherical polar coordinates to the Cartesian basis vectors. And this can be rewritten as using the basis vectors that we're familiar with from the directional derivatives. So basis vector pointing in the x direction, the y direction, the z direction, over here the r direction, theta and phi directions. Now, for rotation about the z-axis, we have, substituting in, we have all the, these objects here. When we expand that out, we end up with this. And if we just, by setting theta as to pi on 2, to place it in the plane that we're familiar with, we get this generator of rotations here, in the phi direction. So there's our first killing vector for the Schwarzschild uh, geometry in the phi direction. Now, for rotation about the y-axis, Turning into spherical polar coordinates gives us this vector. And for rotation at the uh, x-axis, this killing vector here giving us this here in spherical polar coordinates. So the four killing vectors of the Schwartz style geometry are A is this object, the time basis vector, the phi basis vector, and then these two vectors here. Alright, now all killing vectors obey this condition. So a killing vector K. They obey the condition of dd lambda k dot u is zero. All right, so for example, a particle in Minkowski space time has a tangent vector given by u equals dx i d lambda. Remember the parameterized in terms of lambda. Ei is ui ei. This object here. 
Yeah, using the killing vectors from the Minkowski flat space time n is the individual basis vectors found earlier. We see that this object here, k dot u, and then the derivative with respect to lambda, is the subject here, quantica delta applies for the basis vectors, times ui the components, gives it dd lambda of uj equals zero. So the components of the tangent vector, which represents the velocity of the particle, is these little tangent vectors to its world line, get zero. So let's just say the momentum is part of P is m zero u equals u, and let's just by set m zero equal to u, the mass of the particle is one. So we're talking about unit mass. So we could then rewrite the previous equation as dd lambda p j equals zero. So this is per unit of mass, the momentum per unit of mass. Now, and then and that applies for each of the components j, which is zero to three. So zero, one, two, and three. So the zero component of momentum is just the energy component e over c. Now, that, the derivative of that zero that says the energy is constant, and so energy is conserved. Um, each of the spatial three momentum, that's P1, P2, P3, uh, each, the derivative of those is zero, that means they're constant. So this equation tells that each component of momentum in the direction of the killing vector is constant. This means that both the three momentum and the energy of the particle are conserved.